think we're doing what we uh, what we should be doing. We're passing the peace in the early time before church. That's a good time to do it. No interruption. But I appreciate you being here uh, on the holiday weekend. Uh, that's uh, when there's not a whole lot of people here. This is a a um, Trinity Sunday. And don't worry, I'm not going to take you down the road of the Trinity uh, again. I've been down that road with you, but it is a day when we uh, are grateful for the fact that God, uh, that we've experienced as a creator, as a redeemer, and as a comforter, which is why the early church came up with the idea in the first place. It was from their experience of God. And so I'm glad. Uh, that you're here. I'll make this announcement. Patsy would like uh, for you, if you did not receive an email this week, uh, to uh, let her know uh, so she can put you back in the uh, list because she had to change computers. You know what? How you lose everything when you do that. And so uh, if you can let her know, she'll put you back on the list. Um, we may have to announce that for a couple of weeks because Memorial Day is not, the weekend's not a good time to announce it. There are a lot of people who are here that would like to know that. Uh, are there nice other announcements? Did you have one about your plan? Yeah, Sharon Brown, who's uh, part owner of the Buzz, had a surgery on her eyes on uh, Wednesday. Congratulations. 
let them know we think that. Oh, by the way, I won't be here next week. <laughs> I hope uh, I'll be back really soon. I, they're doing it on Thursday, and I would rather it than Monday. So I, they're wasting a week there that I could be recuperating. But I'm just lucky that I'm going at all because I was scheduled for August, and somebody canceled. And I said, I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it. <laughs> I've never dreaded and looked forward to something so much in my life. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, the caregiver. Please remember the caregiver. Uh, but, uh, yes. Alan stops his Tuesday. That's right. We will remember Alan uh, and as we do each week. Yes. Uh, and we're going to have somebody preaching the next couple of Sundays. We've got Alan Payne. We all know Alan. And then we've got a um, Williamson guy that's going to come down. And then John Perone, if Jackie's not back on Father's Day, uh, John Perone will join us from the Center Church in the Presbyterian. So we've got three guys. They're not going to, he set the bar really high. So, you know, let's don't get too upset if we leave the church. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. Um, if there's no other announcements, let's do prepare our hearts for worship. Dream for the world is to be born from above by the Spirit. 
The way to take part in that dream is to be born of water and spirit. That gift is available this day. May you receive God's spirit, be made whole, and dwell more deeply in God's love divine. Amen.
Gospel according to John, chapter 21. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, two others of his disciples. And Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said, well, we'll go with you. They went out and got in the boat, and that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples didn't know it was Jesus. He said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered, no. He said, cast the net to the right side of the boat, you'll find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said, bring some of the fish that you've caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them, and though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said, come and let's have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. And Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the second of the fish. And this was now the third time that Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. The second time he said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said it to him a third time, and he said, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Holy Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, take us by the hand and walk with us now through the lesson to teach us. Amen. I'm going fishing. What a, what a good thing to tell you. I mean, of all the things John could tell us that Peter once said, and he said a lot of important things, why would he say that? I'm going fishing. Is that important? Well, it must be. It's in there. I'm going fishing. It's very important, and I'll tell you why. Because I'm going fishing doesn't mean I'm just going fishing. You might know the Bible's a theological book. It's written the theologically. What does I'm going fishing mean in this case? Well, in Peter's case, it means I've had enough. I'm through with God. I'm finished with the mission. I'm going back to do what I used to do before I ever met him. And he took some people with him. I believe I'll go too. That's how much of an influence we are. I, I, I wondered why he would do that. And, you know, you can think about it. Maybe he's disappointed in Jesus that he would allow the Romans to kill him in such an awful way. After all, he begged him, don't go. Don't go down there. They're going to get you. And Jesus said, I've got to go. I'm going to, I'm going to deal with Lazarus. He's dead. He's sleeping. I'm going to wake him. So they said, well, we might as well go with him. They knew what was going to happen. Maybe he's just very disappointed. Or maybe he's disappointed with God. What kind of a God would allow something like that? That's the most horrible thing I've ever seen in my life. You ever felt that way? In my last church in Knoxville, we had the funeral of a little five-year-old girl 
who died of cancer. Her grandparents and her dad grew up here. She was named Maddie Harrell, five years old. And I was with them in the hospital at two o'clock in the morning when she whimpered and her mother picked her up and held her in her arms and she breathed her last. Five years old. Now that's enough to cause some parents and, and their friends to say, why did this happen? What kind of God will allow this? And I knew that when I did Maddie's funeral. I said to myself, draw your words carefully because there may be people here having a faith crisis today. We all go through those times. You may have felt that way in some hard time you went through, more than likely if it was somebody close to you, if it's somebody you love. Why? Maybe, maybe you felt that way when you saw what Putin did and is doing to those people in Ukraine. Or when you saw what Hamas did to the people in Israel. Or what you see what Israel's doing to the people in Gaza. I think John may have told us this story because he knows we all go through times when we're just disappointed with God and we say, how could God allow this? That's what I'm going fishing means. I've had it. I've had enough. I've reached the red line. That is the end for me. It doesn't take very long for any of us to know that faith is more in spite of than because of. Well, go ahead, make your list when you get home. Don't do it now, I'm talking. <laughs> make your list when you get home. I believe because of, and you'll list all kinds of things, because of a newborn baby, because of my grandkids, because of the stars in the sky, because of what I've learned in church, because of the ocean and the mountains. Oh, you can have a list. Then put, I believe, in spite of. That list is always longer. Suffering, death, wars, tornadoes, hurricanes, pandemics, cancer, heart attacks, strokes, Oh, you can just keep going with that list. Just see if the because of list were longer, we'd call it proof. But because the in spite of list is longer, we call it faith. And that's the difference. It's easy to believe when things are going really smooth, but when you go something through something with someone you love, no, no, no. That could be Peter's problem. That may be why he went back to fishing. He's disappointed with God. He doesn't know that forgiveness doesn't mean forgiving other people. That's not all it means. It means sometimes we have to forgive God. I don't understand this. I will forgive you. You have forgiven me. We have to do that. Maybe he doesn't know that. Nobody ever told him that. It's a wonderful thing to know. Maybe he just got to the red line, to the breaking point. Or maybe, and I think this is more likely, I think maybe <laughs> Peter needs to forgive himself. You know, that's the hardest forgiveness in the world. I mean, after all, a lot of people disqualify themselves when they're ashamed, when they've done something wrong. And they're ashamed. I mean, after all, Peter said, look around here at these other disciples. Can you see them? When they're all gone, old Simon will be right there. And then he denied him three times. He's the one who said, Jesus said, who do you say I am? And he's the one. He's the one. You're the son of God, the Messiah. Oh. He was a good disciple. 
He was a smart disciple. And then they got him on the night of the, before the crucifixion. And they said, weren't you one of his disciples? No, I never knew him. I didn't think I saw you. No, oh, no, no, you didn't see me. I believe I did. Expletive, no. What he said, that's what he did. Didn't say expletive. He said, no, 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 no. Maybe, maybe the man needs to forgive himself. You know, God never, for, never disqualifies anybody. He didn't disqualify Judas. Judas didn't hang around to see what God could do with the betrayers. Here is a man who has done something wrong. He's ashamed of himself, and now I think he won't forgive himself. Look through the Bible. God didn't disqualify Abraham when he failed. He didn't disqualify David. He didn't disqualify Moses. He didn't qualify, disqualify Paul. You just go on through the Bible. Peter needs to know that. Somebody needed to preach to him on Trinity Sunday. Forgive yourself, Peter. God forgives you. You're going to have to forgive yourself. With God, your future is more important than your past. If you could remember that, you'd remember the handful. But Peter hasn't learned it, and so he's disqualifying himself. And He's temporarily at least lost his faith. You know, when I was growing up, they used the word lost in a much different word, way. It was, it was the word we used for people that never been to church, never, never uh, had, uh, made any indication that they were a person of faith. Pray for the lost, and that's what we were talking about. But you know, the Bible doesn't do that. The Bible uh, mentions things that were lost that had been already found. How do you lose something if you never found it in the first place? Well, in the Bible, a woman loses a coin. And she searched for it frantically till she could find it. Where is it? Where is it? Have you ever done that? Maybe a billfold or a purse, a credit card. Oh, that's, that'll get you. A cell phone. I've, I've lost those three times a day. <laughs> It'll make you frantic. A shepherd who loses a sheep. He's got a hundred. Now he's just got 99. I'm going to leave those 99 in the wilderness where something can happen to them. And I'm going to go search for the one that's lost. And you think, what kind of a nut does that? <laughs> I'll tell you, it's the kind of a nut that loves you one at a time. Doesn't love you by the block. Doesn't love you by the acre. He loves you as if you were the only one. So if any of those other 99 get lost, he's going to go for them too. And say, you 98, wait here, I've got another one that's lost. He loves us individually. He doesn't love us by the flock. So he goes and searches and searches and searches. You know what I did once? On a test with my class, we would we'd been studying the Gospels, and there were 10 questions, kind of little essay questions, and I put a number 11, and that was a bonus question. And I said, you know, that's a bonus. If you get that, we're going to make up for one you might have missed, but you know what it was? How long is until? Made them think. I mean, they heard these parables. She searched until she found. He searched for that she until he found. How long is until? I got some good answers, the ones I was looking for. Forever. That's how long until is. I said, you got 10 points right there. And if they missed it, I said, well, it didn't cost against you. 
until a father who has two sons loses them both. He had them. They weren't lost, but they got lost. Like Peter, they got lost. One of them said, I want what's coming, and that was the third. And he said, I'm taking it to the far country. And he blew it. His dad's fortune blew it. And he knew he had done wrong. And he comes back and his dad goes out and says, I've been looking for you. You're lost. Now you're found. I'm going to have a party. And he's got another son that says, hmm. I'm not going in there. He's lost. He's lost his way. I don't forgive. No, I don't forgive. I'm not going to forgive it. You never gave me a party. And his dad said, no, I just gave you two-thirds of everything I've got. How's that for a party? He goes outside to him, just like he did the other guy. And he says, come on. Come on inside, son. Everything I have is yours. It's better than a party. Come on. Come back. He, he searches till he finds it. Jesus doesn't tell us, by the way, if he ever got back inside because we're that other guy. That's us. And so we're like Peter. We get lost sometimes. Are we going to come back? That's how that parable ends. God will search for you until he finds you. That's what he always does. And he says to Peter, hey, do you love me more than these? I used to have a problem with that. I thought he was pointing to these other guys, these other disciples. You love me more than these guys? You know, that's not like Jesus to say that. What's he talking about? What did Peter leave him for? Fishing boats and nets. He's back out there fishing. Heck with this, I'm back to the Give me my boats back. And he says, do you love me more than these? And, and, and he, he makes a charcoal fire because that's where Peter said, I don't know him, I don't know him, I don't know him. He makes a charcoal fire. And he says, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Three times. Gives him a chance to, to reconcile and say, now listen, I may be lost, but I love you. And when he says that, he gets his faith back. The next time you get lost, just ask that question. Do I love you? You get your faith back. I uh, think again of the story I learned from my friend Hal Warley, who was the late dean of, of the chapel at High Point. He was a wonderful man, a good friend. And he told that story, and I may have told some of you about Leon Hollingsworth, who was a former chaplain at Wake Forest. He took a trip up to, over to the North Carolina mountains, and they pulled him over for speeding, Forest Ranger. And he had to go to a little county seat town in the mountains. And he had a whole bunch of excuses in his mind, and he was going to use them. And he went in, and he turned pale as a ghost because the judge was a former student. <laughs> And it was a student that failed his class. <laughs> and so he just forgot about his excuses. And he, he looked up at that judge and he said, I'm not going to get out of this, am I? <laughs> and the judge said, not a chance. <laughs> not a chance, Hollingsworth. Someday, when you appear before the judge who judges the quick and the dead, 
the one who is merciful, the one who loves you, the one you speak of in your creed, that one, when you face that judge, you're going to say, I'm not going to get out of this, am I? And he's going to say to you, of course you're going to get out of this. I gave my life for you. I love you. You can count on that. All I want to know is, you love me? Would you stand as we say our affirmation of faith? I believe in God the Father Almighty, made prayer in heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all goodness, you gave your Son for the life of the world, and you sent your Spirit that that love might live within us. Teach us to love each other this day and to seek to do in the face of all those who would separate us to do good, we pray. We especially pray for those who suffer together with Christ in his suffering. They might find healing as he did. Especially then, we pray for Greg and Amanda and Bonnie, for Grady, Don, and Sue, for Alan, for Brandy and Doug, Cindy and Betty, Sharon, David, Scott, Betty, Mark, Carlene, Joe, Mike, Sam, Joey, John, Sheila, Wayne, Linda, Hank, and Joe. You know them. We love them. So do you. We pray for them with all our hearts. And we remember others that haven't been mentioned, but we know them, and they're on our mind, and hear their name that we call out to you right now in silence. Hear our prayer together as we pray after the prayer of your Son. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Leave us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
him is number 610, oh, 4,000 tons to sing. <laughs>
Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 720, Jesus Calls Us. being